Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and this is the start of a new reading vlog which is going to be filmed over a long weekend. We're shortly off to North Wales where I have booked a barn conversion off grid in the middle of nowhere but North Wales is my favourite place for like in the middle of the most beautiful scenery, fingers crossed it's going to be nice weather. It's for my mum's birthday which will be on Sunday and my sister's coming, my stepdad's coming and Chris's coming so it's going to just be really really lovely. We've got board games packed, we're planning on maybe doing like one trip out a day but nothing like major. We just want to really chill, hunker down and enjoy each other's company and read quite a lot is the plan. And on that note, I thought I would tell you what I'm packing. And I've been talking, oh, that sounds quite rude, I think, if you say it in the wrong place. I'll tell you what books I'm packing. And <laughs> I I did a Patreon book club last night, the first one, and it was so, so, so much fun. And Fiona was saying um, how it'd be interesting to see me talk about how my tastes are changing or how I feel my tastes are changing. And so I thought I would select some books that kind of might give a bit of insight into if they are and what's going on. And so that is what I've done. Now, the first book out of all of them could fit in with another category later, but mainly it's just the book that I just really, really want to read at the moment. And I think whim is so important. And this has been sort of to the forefront of my brain. And it does show that my whim has changed a little bit because until this morning or until yesterday, I think it was when I spoke about it on that Patreon book club, I was really keen to read Kate Atkinson's Shrines of Gaiety. I look at Atkinson, she's one of my favourite authors, but then I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm quite in the mood for that. And what I have been thinking about quite a lot recently is Lap Vona by Tessa Moshveg. So I'm going to take this with me. And also, it's a book that I can pass on because I have another copy, the signed copy. So if my mum or my sister want this, they can have it. I've heard it's quite full on. I'm not going to talk about the blurbs of these books because I'll talk to you about them as and when I read them. But yeah, Lap Vona is kind of like the one that I think I'm going to start when I get there. And then I thought I'd pick a debut that kind of almost sort of shows, I feel like, the direction I think my reading wants to go. And that is Waiting for Ted by Marie Big. And this looks bonkers, quite sort of suburban noir, a bit sinister, quirky. That's what I'm very much in the mood for. Also, it's from Dead Ink Books, who are a small indie publisher who've actually opened a bookshop over the water in Liverpool. And uh, yeah, I just think this is going to be very me. And again, this is a copy, uh, uh, this is a book. This is a book that I have two copies of, and so I can pass this one on. I wanted to pick a book by an author I've read one of their books before and really liked it. So, will I like a second one? And again, this feels a bit quirky, a bit not edgy, I don't like using the term edgy, but I want to use the term edgy. And that is My Phantoms by Gwendolyn Riley. I've heard about this a lot recently because, or I've heard about Gwendolyn Riley again a lot recently because a lot of people have just discovered First Love, which I read when it was on the Women's Prize long list. Did it make the short list? I can't remember. That's meant to be my mastermind subject and there's me not remembering. Anyway, First Love at the time got quite a caning, um, but I just really, really liked it. People said it was flinty and not very nice and but I just yeah I really got it so I'm really intrigued with this one I won't take this finished edition though I will take a proof I have over on my shelves there speaking of proofs an author that um I packed because they could be I have a, a rule that um a third book if I love three books by an author they become like a favorite author I mean it could all go wrong on the fourth but for the time being. So, Robbie Arno is one such author where I read two of them, absolutely love them, but have not read Limberloss, which is out now. And I feel really bad because I got sent this really early and I really love his writing, but it, it's something that I want to break the habit of, which is leaving books that I know I'm going to love for a rainy day, because just what's the point? Read them when you get them and enjoy them or don't or whatever, but just do it. So uh, yeah, but I'm very, very excited for this. And I wanted to pack a favourite author, that also could go with what I was just saying about how I get sent these books in advance sometimes and I just wait until probably after they've come out. Partly that's because I want to have a conversation about them and you can't really until other people have read them. This is also a short story collection and a favourite author and I haven't spoken about this author very much I don't think. I feel like I read more of her work pre-YouTube um, but it's Margaret Atwood and this is Old Babes in the Wood which is her forthcoming short story collection. It's out in March next year and also I would quite like to get a bit ahead with some of my reading as well and so yeah we'll see if uh, 
if I enjoy this. And I, like I said, I want to read more short story collections. I've got a feeling my mother will want to get her mitts on this when she sees it. So there I have that. And then I've got some non-fiction because I don't read enough of it. This year particularly, I've been really, really dreadful. I want to push myself a little bit more with it. And so I have Annie Arnaud. This is I Remain in Darkness. Annie Arnaud recently won the uh, Nobel Prize. Also, um, the lovely Bob is doing our November, I'll link his channel down below. Um, so I kind of want to join in with this. Lots of people recommended other books, but this one links into one of her parents having Alzheimer's. And that's something that I find heartbreaking, grimly fascinating, but also have personal chimings with. So I think this is going to be a good way in with her. And um, it's short and sharp, but I want to get some nonfiction read in nonfiction November. But also just this year, I've been dreadful. I think I've read like five or six nonfiction books, all mainly for Sky Arts Book Club. Anyway, then I have some poetry. And this is Bless the Daughter Raised by a Voice in a Head by Wash and Shire. And I've heard amazing things about this. It's also on the shortlist for the Books in My Bag Readers Awards, um, which sadly I can't go to now because of a blinking train strike. I was also supposed to be seeing Ariel Bissett next week, but never mind. We're hoping to meet up again in the spring. I'm really, really keen to get to this. And then last but not least, I wanted something that um, was a bit of a thriller and probably a patient, hopefully, but also I really want to be reading much more fiction in translation. And so I picked up Tokyo Express by Sicho Matt. Sumoto, and I think it was Niven Govindan that made me want to read this, but it's a crime on a train, um, which is a trope I really, really like. I love train journeys. I'm not doing one, thankfully. I'm just going in the car today. That's uh, that's another one for the list. Wow, we've done seven minutes already and we've not even got there. So it could be, interestingly, another long reading vlog from me. Right, we've now got about three hours in the car. Well, two and a half hours and then maybe an hour in Waitrose doing the food shop for the weekend. So while it takes us all that time to get there, it's going to fly by for you because not only am I going to skip that whole three hours, possibly a little bit of scenery. We'll see how beautiful it is. I mean, you're going to get a lot of Welsh scenery over the next however long this video is. It's already quite long. <laughs> I also thought I would share with you some snippets from the last week that haven't been in any vlogs. And they are the River of Light, which my lovely friend Pip curates and commissions this amazing illuminated light display that you trail through Liverpool. You may have seen Pip through Crime Time before. We're hoping to bring it back, but it'll probably be quite sporadic because Pip's getting married next year and she's also working on Eurovision, so it's quite a big year for her. And then I thought I'd share some scenes from ghost hunting that I did with Most Haunted and some of Yvette's publishing team, which was super duper duper good fun earlier this week. And also some snippets from Tove Low, a concert that I went to last week. She's one of my favorite pop stars ever. Due to illnesses and all sorts, I've missed two previous concerts. So this was one that I was so excited for, and it was possibly one of the best concerts I've ever been to in my life. So I'll leave you with that, and then I'll see you when we get there. I may film doing some of the food shop, but I may insert that elsewhere later. Otherwise, it just gets too confusing. All this timey wimey nonsense. <laughs> I can't really tell it's Pip, but that's Pip. She's here and she's done all of this. Whoa. Literally herself. Haven't you, Pip? Um, yeah, that in your vision. Yeah. With, with other people, but yeah. It's really Pip. It's all Pip. River of Pip, not River of Light. <laughs> that's what it's River called in 2023. Of Pip. <laughs> you can't see us. Bye. Where am I? There I am. There I am. There they are. There they are. For three hours, I'm going to investigate this.
this incredible location. Of course, I'm not on my own. I've got the crew with me. If anyone's here with us, give us a tap. You don't think we should be up here? Because it's no, She said no, bro. Yeah, we're not going to Yeah, it's strong, bro. While here, we just want to say hello to whoever is around. I'm going to give you a knock. Maybe if I do a knock, you can do a knock if you're here. We're all welcome to the possibility of you being in here. I give another knock, maybe you could give us a knock. But then you said that you just shut up, and no, did you shut up, so was you talking now? So we're here, and it's awful, isn't it, Chris? Awful. Awful and bearable. Um, it's taken us about, how long has it taken us? Three and a half hours? From the bottom of the hill? No. <laughs> it was a very, very steep road track. We went to Waitrose and did a big shop, not realising there was a tiny, tiny bridge. And, um, but now we're here, and I filmed a little bit so you can have a tour around while we get settled. We've got to wait until another, like, two and a half hours or so until Everyone else gets here, which means I can crack on starting a book with a cup of tea, which my husband is currently making me.
Oh, that looks like a volcano. This thing far looks quite well, Look she's, at that. She's got Vesuvius on the brain at all times. I am, actually. <laughs> or Etna. Look at that. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mommy. Happy birthday to you. home as you can see it is Wednesday we got back from our five days of delight in North Wales last night I fall in love with North Wales more and more every time I go there I just think it is one of the most stunning places and 
partly because of that and the fact that I spent a lot of time just like looking out at the views and everything also because it was my mum's birthday weekend and she said she had a fabulous 57th birthday I didn't get as much reading done as I would like but as you'll have seen did do some book shopping I'll show you what I bought in a second just had the nicest weekend my little sister came for part of it um and we took my mum and my stepdad to Rear Goch where they got to meet Mike and Preds and see the place that we love to go to so much and of course Floss who is I think now officially my favourite dog of all time and who gave me some delightful cuddles um, and made me quite desperate for a puppy but holding fire, holding fire on that for the foreseeable. Actually I might just ask if I can borrow Floss at some point but anyway or Floss sit. Anyway moving on from that we just had the best time and uh, mum is in reading on the Red Hill at the moment and like she's in love with that and so she was fab to take her there and also just I love that place so much and I should say that Preds who um, runs uh, the campsite with Mike at Rigoff, it's him and his brother's place that we stay, Beauty Bank, which you'll have seen and I'll link that down below if you want to find out more. Now, because we ended up doing lots of things and going out and also playing lots of board games and stuff, I didn't get around to reading as much as I planned because earlier I've seen that I plan to read loads and actually I just read one book but it has become one of my top three if not possibly in my top two favourite books of 2022 and that is La Bona by Atessa Mosheveg. I just thought this was incredible. I was completely lost in it. I was sometimes quite grumpy that I had to be sociable in order to put it down and go and even like play a board game or even actually at one point I got begrudging a cheese board and that never happens. That's how much I was engrossed in this. But I also really enjoyed how I didn't rush through it and I don't ever speed read and I just want to clarify that. Um, I mean that's actually frankly obvious by the lack of book hauls I've done this year because of the lack of reading I've got around to for various different reasons. But it was the first time in ages where I've just been like oh my god I'm so lost in this book. It's so me and it's making me think things whilst also just being a great ripping yarn and we follow um, a young man called Marek who lives with his father Jude. His mother has died he thinks and he has this cousin who he has this kind of odd relationship with and something terrible happens and we follow Marek from there as he gets more embroiled in, he's very much at the beginning embroiled in the life in Lapbona, I should say it's set in medieval Britain, but I also thought it could easily be set like in a dystopic future way, way, way ahead. Well, possibly not that far ahead, but anyway, let's not dwell on that. It involves Inna, who is a woman who's by many seen as a witch, which that was just like, witch, witch, that was just instantly my cup of tea. I loved all the characters no matter how awful they were or grotesque and the nature of what is grotesque is something that I think Tessa Moshfeg looks at in this book. And um, that Vona itself is this small uh, village where not a lot happens. People seem to be happy or believe they're happy. However, Willem lives on the hill. He's the lord of the manor and he's living this life of utter wealth and he has secrets. And actually the big thing that I really loved about this book is everyone in here has secrets. And as the book goes on, certain revelations come along or secrets are revealed and it just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And, spinning. and I loved that. I loved how you got to know various different characters in the village. I will say there's some incredibly confronting stuff in here, uh, be it cannibalism, be it, oh there's all sorts, um, horses with their eyes gouged out and then their eyes are used for other things. Yeah it's a it's a really dark book. It's not as gross as like I've heard, I've, like I've seen people say oh I survived like that. I didn't feel like that about it, I just was lost in it hooked by its gothic nature and could not get enough and it also reminded me how much I love historical fiction so I think I might head to more of that soon. So yeah I absolutely love this, I'll talk about it in more detail um, in a wrap up because I'm planning on bringing those back at some point, well, this will be my November one, but, November one but I'm hoping to do um, an October wrap up and book haul very soon. As this goes live I will have had a break from booktube for a little bit unannounced so was, it just got so bonkers busy at the end of finishing my job and i'm wary that it'll get a bit busy and there'll be lots for me to learn in the new role that i'm taking on which i'll talk about more in a cup and a catch up at some point maybe a live one would you like a live one let me know in the comments down below i had a little break and i'll be sporadically back i think until december when i say sporadic i'm planning on actually i've got videos planned for the rest of november so i don't know what i'm talking about anyway moving on blah 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 loved this I also loved my time in Macuncliffe, 
which if you want to know how it's spelled, check out my new tote bag. Oh, or don't, so I'll just turn that over there. Yeah, that is it, McCuncliffe. And I just, yeah, loved it. Um, I got this in the fabulous deli. And I picked up uh, four books, actually. The first of which you'll have seen uh, me holding up. I didn't buy Dr. Dick in the Diffie Valley bookshop, but I did get, this may be a surprise to many of you, A Christmas Tree by Charles Dickens, which is illustrated by H.M. Brock. Um, or pictured, it says here, very fancy. And the pictures are lovely. And I just thought this would be a nice book for Christmas. I read A Christmas Carol last Christmas because Melanie bought it for me and I enjoyed it very much. And then in um, Penrolt, I want to say, bookshop, I got two books which have been wrapped delightfully in this old newspaper. So I shall unwrap it right now, or unwrap them right now, for I bought two. And they are, sorry, Penrolt. There you go, you can see it there. Penrault Bookshop. Firstly, I got some non-fiction, which is A Girl's Story by Annie Arno. I found it really, really difficult to get any Annie Arno books since she won the Nobel Prize. I mentioned one earlier. I didn't read that over the weekend, but I will get to that one first. But as it was there, I was like, oh, I'm going to get it. And also, I want to read more non-fiction. I think I'm going to really like her writing. And then the other one that I got, which was a bit of a surprise, but I have had it on the brain, I think partly because the adaptation's coming out. Also, that vein was making me think, oh, historical, historical, so I'm about to have a historical binge. The book is, I'm waffling on, The Wonder by Emma Donoghue. Now, I have read, how many Emma Donoghue books have I read? Let's play that game. I've read Frog Music, I think I've read Astray, I've read Room, have I read The Sealed Letter? And I own a few others. I feel like I might have read Slamakin as well. Anyway, I've read a few of her books and really, really enjoyed them. I fancy heading to this next, actually, so it'll probably be the next bit. Big. It'll probably be the next book that I pick up. I only read one book, but what a blinking corker. And it has reminded me, it's not about the quantity of books you read, it's about the quality, because I would treasure the reading experience of reading this in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by like lambs, feeling like I could be lost in time, be it in the past, medieval past, or a dystopic future, with a roaring fire and just having this gruesome gothic adventure with Marek and Inna and Jude and Willem and Lisbeth and yeah and oh Father Barnabas oh he's awful anyway I'll we'll talk about it more into the course but there we go so that was a vlog of sorts I feel like it was and wasn't a reading vlog but hey ho it ended up being a long video because it ended up being a chat about how I'm going to work out what I want to read, which actually the format at the very beginning I might need, I might use in another video coming up, but also ended up being a bit of travel vlog, a bit of a uh, well a review and a letting you know what a new favourite book of 2022 is and a mini haul. So there we go. Sorry there wasn't chatty bits in the vlog and we were in this open. It was quite an open barn conversion, so I didn't want to be sort of break into what other people were doing or chatting in the background while they were trying to read or anything. And also, sorry, no videos with my mother. She's been quite elusive about filming at the moment. I've asked her on two occasions now, last weekend and the one while we went to hers, and she's sort of avoided it, and I'm not quite sure why, but next time she asks me, I may well say no. Anyway, I will go, but if you got this far, leave me the emoji of a sheep, and I will speak to you all very, very soon. Bye.